So when you see the liquid aqueous humor gushing out of the cornea, you see the ice perforated, it's got a big hole in it, uh, talk about a horror story. So I recently had a friend ask me about the scariest medical stories I've ever seen. So in this video, I'm going to share my top true scary stories from the eye clinic. Let's take a look. What's up, this is Dr. Alan here from the Dr. Eye Health Show, and today we're gonna to be sharing some true scary stories from the eye clinic. Recently, I had a friend who asked me about the scariest things I've seen in the eye clinic, the most messed up, tough cases, things like that. And he says that every time he meets a medical professional, that's all he really wants to know. So I figured, you know, it's really close to Halloween, and 2020's been scary already, but why not add a cherry on top? Okay, so for the first scary story, let's just start a little mild and we'll save the really gross, gruesome ones toward the end. This first story, right out of residency, I had a patient come in for an emergency visit. She was in a lot of pain. She was covering her eye with a you know a wet washcloth sort of thing. What, what we looked at underneath was that the entire front surface, her cornea, was massively abraded. Her entire front surface was scratched and she couldn't even open her eye well enough without numbing medication to even, even try to read the vision chart. What happened is that she ended up hitting her eye with a doormat. She took it outside and she shook the doormat, but it came up and swung and hit her in the eye. But this doormat wasn't just like any normal doormat. It was like a straw doormat. And if you've ever seen one of those, they kind of come up really spiky and hard so you can wipe your foot off on it. She hit herself in the eye with this and it looked like some wild animal had scratched away at her eye. Unfortunately for this person, the other eye, what made this so complicated is her other eye that wasn't hit, she was blind in that eye. She was severely diabetic and she had a bad surgery that didn't go well and she didn't heal very well because when you're severely diabetic, you don't heal as well. Ultimately, the good news for this patient, we got her a lot of medications, things healed up and she ended up seeing much better, uh, but it, it was a long, painful road for her. All right, now that first one wasn't too bad. This next scary story also happened to me. This one, this was a patient who went through cataract surgery and after any eye surgery, we usually put some sort of a shield onto the eye to prevent someone from rubbing or poking at the eye because if you push on it, the, op the wound on the eye may open up and that's not good. Now this patient uh, in the middle of the night took the shield off and not only rubbed the eye, but at the eye with their finger. And if you can imagine all the nasty bacteria that can live on your hand, this patient scratched their eye uh, after surgery and because of the open wound, ultimately it ended up getting infected. If somebody gets a nasty infection after a surgery, such as cataract surgery, they usually don't show signs of bad infection until about four to seven days later. This patient ended up getting one of the worst things you can get in eye care, and that's called an endophthalmitis. An endophthalmitis is an infection of the inner workings of the eye. This person perforated their cornea. The surface of the eye ended up perforating. That's where the jelly, the liquid of the eye, ends up coming out of the eye and ends up pouring out of the eye. It's pretty gruesome. Uh, and again, it's one of those things where as a doctor, you, you see these, you study these, and then when you see it, you kind of, you don't go into panic mode necessarily, but you turn into, to me, I kind of turn into this military general. All of a sudden, my charisma, my attitude suddenly numbs out and I'm super serious. And I'm like, okay, we need to do this, we need to do this, we need to do this. And we needed to send her right away to get treatment for the endophthalmitis. She needs an, an injection inside of the eye with strong antibiotics. So she did have to have a needle go toward the eye and give the injection of the antibiotics. And then she ended up ultimately needing a corneal transplant and patching surgery. They needed to fix that open wound on the eye. Uh, and yeah, it, it wasn't good. And it's something that uh, I still think about. And you don't, you don't forget those cases. All right, so my third scary kind of medical story here is not mine. It's one of my eye doctor friends who had this happen to them. So when it comes to this case, uh, there was a husband and wife and the wife had an affair with uh, another man. And so the boyfriend came up to the door, uh, the husband answered it and answered it with a knife straight to the guy's face. Basically cut the eye in half, like cutting a grape straight down the middle. From there, somehow the guy made it into the hospital, into the emergency room. My friend was called in for an emergency consult to deal with the eye. And he saw the guy and thought, you know what, this guy's probably gonna die anyway, but let's just 
do all we can do. So he used some stitches, he patched up the eye, sewed it back up, and uh, then we're gonna see if the guy lived through the night. Well, the guy did. The guy survived, uh, thank, you know, thank goodness for modern medicine and the ER team. But this put my doctor friend, my surgeon friend, in a tough position because the eye was severed and cut so badly open uh, he's now at risk of something else. And if any other eye doctors are watching this, you're probably already thinking about what, what, the, what the problem could be. The issue is when people have something like that where the eye has major trauma to it, your eye doctor has to decide and talk with you about removing the eye. And it's not that the eye is in bad shape or isn't working. It's because of something called sympathetic ophthalmia. Now, sympathetic ophthalmia is where your body's immune system doesn't just attack the eye that was hurt. What happens is that your eye is largely inert to your body's immune system. Your body doesn't recognize that the eye is even there. So once you have trauma to the eye and the inner contents of the eye become exposed to your body's immune system, your body creates inflammatory cells and has an inflammatory reaction and starts attacking the other eye. So people will have trauma to one eye, but your body can be six months to years later, they start attacking the eye that wasn't involved. And so when there's major trauma like this, doctors often have to just go ahead and decide, we're gonna remove that eye that was had the trauma, sacrifice that eye, because you don't want the immune cells, your immune system to attack your other eye. Because it's better to uh, ha lose the bad eye and just have one good functioning eye than to lose both eyes and be blind. Now, the reason the surgeon friend didn't just remove the eye right away is because for legal reasons, because if somebody just comes and takes your eye right away and they don't have proof that your vision was bad enough to remove the eye, uh, at least in the United States, there could potentially be a legal battle where you could turn around and sue the doctor that they removed the eye too soon and blinded you in that eye. Sounds kind of messed up, but yeah, that's the way our legal system works with medicine a lot of the time. So what they did is they let the guy in the ICU heal up uh, and they kept on checking on his vision and they wanted to talk with him and so that was the patient's decision to remove the eye. They had to explain to him what was going on. And so finally he went in to go talk to the patient and really convince him, hey, we need to take that eye, otherwise you're gonna lose both eyes. But he couldn't. The patient had unhooked themselves from all of the instruments in the ICU and just jumped out of bed and ran off and left. So. No one knows what happened to that guy. All right, so my final scary story, and I'll tell you, this one can be pretty nasty for some people. This one I saw in my residency. Uh, I had a gentleman <laughs> who, uh, and I'm afraid, I'm sorry to laugh sometimes, but I think that's just an automatic kind of response from a lot of medical professionals when they had to deal with some really nasty, tough stuff, is that uh, we have to cope with it somehow. So I think I naturally try to laugh things off. Tough reality, but we see some tough stuff sometimes. So this scary story, I was in my residency and this gentleman came in and his entire face was just covered in a cloth. And I was like, like, what's going on here? I usually went into residency early in the morning and looked up everybody's chart notes of who was coming in. And this guy, he had a history of a bad basal cell carcinoma. So he had cancer on his eyelid that went so, grew so big that it passed from the eyelid into the eye and into the bone itself. And he had surgery where they removed the eye, they removed part of the bone, the part of the tissue, but then he never followed back up. He was supposed to come back in so they could do reconstruction, they could get him a prosthetic eye, but now he's here in my office uh, sitting in front of me and I, I didn't, I was just like, okay, what, what am I gonna see here? So we removed the washcloth from the eye and what he had in there was a conformer. Uh, it's a little piece of plastic that they put on there just to kind of hold everything's shape. It is the same piece of plastic they had given to him after the surgery and he never did anything with it. There, there was pus, there was goo coming out. Peeling it away was an open cavity to his skull. And it, it really did look like Two-Face from Batman, from the, from the Dark Knight movie. Where, when you see two faces and you can see the muscle and the bone, that, that's really what it looked like. But the gross part was that, yeah, his eye, there was no eye there, it's just this open cavity, and you could see all this moisture and pus 
inside where the eye should be. And the, the tough part was that his cancer had spread and it had spread further into the bone and his bone was flaking off. So I could see his ethmoid air cells and I could see the sinus cavities. The other resident I was with, he, he, he almost lost his lunch. That was probably the grossest, scariest horror story. Uh, I'm pretty sure that gentleman eventually passed away from his cancer, but uh, yeah, that just something you don't expect to see. So hopefully you found these scary stories uh, kind of entertaining, something a little bit educational. If you yourself have a spooky medical story of any kind, either something happened to you, a friend, a family, uh, maybe you're an eye care professional or another medical professional and you want to share your stories, leave them in the comments section below because uh, I do find them pretty fascinating. Otherwise, I hope that uh, the rest of your 2020 is a little bit more uh, delightful and not so spooky after here this Halloween. Thanks so much for watching again. This is Dr. Allen here from the Dr. Isle Show. Keep an eye on it and we'll talk to you soon.